Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Swan Song Stories. This is uh, episode number four. Big ups to our man, JP, for putting the show together in 30 seconds after <laughs> drop frames. Nice work. Uh, I am, of course, joined by the usual band of misfits. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I saw you in my in my stream this morning, Jeff. Thanks for stopping play, by. Yeah, if you play Warhammer, like I'm summoned like a spirit based so. <laughs> Right. Uh-huh. If you look in a mirror and say Warhammer three times, yeah. Jeff appears what? behind you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. What do you uh what do you even up to, Jeff? Uh still stuck on the Darkest Dungeon. Been really enjoying it. Um just funny because it, it just felt like a... It's a game that I think you could beat pretty quick, or you can do what I'm doing, and that's like try to kill all the final bosses and find yourself pushing a ball up a mountain that never ends. Um, <laughs> but I'm still enjoying it, so I had a good time with that. Uh, otherwise, I was in Germany for a little while, where it's hot as shit. It's actually hot everywhere except for where I live. <laughs> well, that's I mean that's nice if it's going to be like that. Yeah. Was, uh, what were you in Germany for? Was it a Warhammer thing? Home Strike Cup. It's a ah. Starcraft tournament. It was fun. It was fun, but I and this is weird. I, I I hope other people will get will experience this at some point, so I don't sound like a lunatic. But like, traveling has pretty much ran its course. Like, uh, I I enjoy, <laughs> but I hate. Like, you, I I feel like you don't recharge from traveling. I feel like over time you have like a finite filter of this is how much traveling you can do in your life. Yeah, I've I've already I've hit that point now where my traveling bones are grinding on each other. Um, I got really lucky on the way there. Like the whole back row was empty and that was pretty nice. It was okay. Uh, but like first things first, I like flip my iPad open. And I'm like, all right, let's watch some movies. And it's just like, it was, it said something like, um, user denied access or something like that. And I'm like, well, this is my iPad. So that's kind of weird. And that was, that's <laughs> no movie, so I read a bunch of books and slept. And on the way back, uh, nobody next to me. So that was pretty cool. But there was a child behind me. And it was one of those things where like the parents had the, Vietnam, 100-yard stare, two kids. They had obviously already been through shit. And I think the woman was just holding her kid like a short-range bazooka because he was just (laughs) pump, 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 pump the back of my seat. And I was, you know, you give him a couple of looks, but I'm not really a confrontational guy. So I just kind of like, after a while, when you give him the looks, I'm not going to like ask a stewardess or yell at him or something like that. So just for the whole flight, I was just like, like this, you know. I find I find that very surprising that you're not the kind of person that would just get up and turn around and be like, "I'm going to destroy you." If it was a dude, you know, if it's if it's an adult, they'll get a w- very awkward adult Jeff conversation where I'm like, "Hey, that's incredibly inappropriate, and it's really immature of you to keep doing that, and not think of those around you. Are you some kind of fucking nihilist piece of shit?" And like, <laughs> usually, uh, anyways. But if it's a child, not much I can do. So I just <laughs> ask people. I'm like are you like pressing into my chair? And they always lie to me and go back to doing it. And so it's like, well, that accomplished nothing. Like I thought they'd yeah. be embarrassed and stop, but. That's didn't why the, didn't somebody, need- I saw some company made like a, a locking mechanism for the chair in front of you. So you like put it in their, their like back tray so they can't recline their seats. What kind oh. of awful person <laughs> you have to be to invent something like that? Like, no, air travel is already miserable enough. Let's make a device that makes it worse. That's what was amazing. it? There was a uh, was it New Zealand Air, and their airplanes were equipped with these like it was something that folded out from the bottom of your seat, and then it allowed your like the bottom half to kind of shift out without disrupting the person behind you. And I was like, this is like the fucking Korean elevators, man. Like they figured something out, but the rest of the world hasn't caught on yet, and I don't understand. Like, oh, it's just, it's a fucking... I saw, on the on the flip side of that, I saw an article not that long ago. I think it was an old, old article, but the CEO of Ryanair, that's that, like, um, Irish yeah. airline, the guy was like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make standing room only airplanes. And they have, like, yeah, they have, like, little ledges you can lean on. I don't think they ever actually launched the program, but their photos are, uh, are like, uh, mock-ups, if you go look at them. They're, like, they have little, like, lean-to things. You just kind of, like, lean on them, and you can you stand in rows on this airplane. That's a horrible idea. Yeah. It's a t- right. I really wonder cool. if that would be more comfortable, though. Because, like, if you're tall, you know, like, my legs always hurt. At least if you're standing. No, Caitlin. No. <laughs> <laughs> the short answer is no. Though. Yeah, if it, my, I like, uh, you know, nowadays they're like, Bing! they're like, everyone put your seatbelts on, a little bit of turbulence come up. Nobody's like, oh God, they're all like, oh, fucking seatbelt. But on that flight, they're like, 
king! Everyone for themselves! So just like fucking people like flying around and like someone's holding ledge like, it's my ledge, god damn it! They're like kicking people back and shit. Kids are crying. <laughs> Stewardesses, they just strap themselves to the walls. They don't give a fuck. They're like, yeah. They're like, Ching! they're like, good luck, everybody. And like the door opens. <laughs> backpack, you know, parachute out of the plane. Um, uh, just for for uh, clarification. Yeah, tell us about um, the Korean elevators. Yes, Korean elevators. Uh, if you've not experienced this, it's in every elevator in Korea. But, you know, you, you walk in, there's 33 stories, and you hit 10, and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm actually on – you know, floor 25. So you hit fucking 10 again and it deselects the floor. So no asshole fucking six year old is walking in there and lighting everything up. No, because you walk in and you fucking unlight it. Now, we live in a world where fucking drones are tracking all of our movement and, like, you know, like, I mean, we can identify crimes via dna but i'm excited for mr robot season two as well marcus go ahead (laughs) but for some reason the rest of the world hasn't figured out that you know what this actually is a really fucking good idea is there not a fucking elevator convention that the world is going to and someone's like hey motherfuckers check this shit out you can deselect floors why is everyone is there money to me am i in the wrong fucking business i'm questioning yes. everything about life talking about this you one. should start the company twatch and it's this new elevator company that brings high quality elevators to america man oh, let's switch yeah. I'm telling you, man. Into it. I don't get it. People Just would call it twat for short. It'd be pretty sick. <laughs> you guys twatting today? Yeah, we're gonna go. I Check I stopped. I stopped using that service after all the stuff with the bits. <laughs> <laughs> so elevators. Yeah, I mean I get you on the travel thing. I think you're right. I think at some point you run out of travel currency, you're gonna get off a plane and just turn it to dust and blow away. That'll yeah. be it. That'll be the death of Jeff. Yeah, I probably here. will. I mean, it's gonna be like my esports mental breakdown is going to happen at an airport. Like someone's just going to be like, because there's been a couple brushes with it where, where like the most unjust, you know, I, I've lived a very privileged, I, I don't have a lot of bad luck. Like I, my bad stories are like my parents' divorce. Like, eh, people have got worse shit that happened to them. But for me, it's, it's like the, there's been like the husky breath of bad luck on my neck a couple times where you're like at an airport and they're like, you know, you, you bought your ticket two months in advance and they're like, uh, you know, we're looking for volunteers to stay behind. We oversold the flight. And they just kind of say that. But if you fucking think about it for a second, <laughs> think about the concept of what they're saying. That what they're saying is they have a product. They purposely oversell it because they're greedy motherfuckers. And what that means is you are planning on going somewhere. And then they tap you on the shoulder and go, no. Why? <laughs> Your ticket didn't exist. I'm like, well, I gave you real money for it. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, you did. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. There's like a flight tomorrow you can take. And you're like, what? Right. I have two connections. They're like, get fucked. That's just the world. That's the world we live in where that can happen. And, you know, on the way back from an international trip, especially Home Story Cup, where I'm casting 14 hour days in 100 degree weather surrounded by people, some of which are guys who are like, hey, do you mind signing that autograph as fat Matt Damon? And then I have to look at him and be like, well, my career dictates that I don't tear your head off right now, but what I want to do is piss on your head. Um, but I, you know, <laughs> and that some, shit still happens. Oh my God, God, dude. God, dude. It's so rare, but it's so, and it's, it's bad too. Cause there's, there was a time there was like super PC, mega kind esports celebrity in control. where like, someone would be like, Hey, I control. I beat you on ladder and you're a douchebag. And then I'd be like, all right, young man. You have a great day. Thanks for your support. Now old curmudgeon esports in control. <laughs> like survive the StarCraft II Holocaust, kind of, but, you know, like every man for himself kind of thing. Like, this guy says this to me, and, and I looked at him, and there's the clocks in my, you know, the in my head. I'm like, nope. Now's not the time, Jeff. You still have <laughs> yeah. not the day, Jeff. Jeff just, now you was, know how every day of my life in that community oh. was like at that point. <laughs> Yeah, there you yeah, go. I'm getting it. I'm getting yeah. this perspective that's happening here. But yeah, I just kind of looked at him and was like, no. And then I sat there, and of course what happens to me is I have the lecture in my head about like what I should have said to him. And none of it's like I explode and yell. It's, it's all just like, that's incredibly inappropriate. And it's like, really, I, I what response did you expect? And like, 
you think you're all that and then some? You fucking asshole. You think you're better than me? It's like, no. <laughs> Anyways, enough about that. So, yeah. Travel sucks. Uh, went and saw Independence Day 2. I'm going to make a video about it because I have a lot of thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you tweet about that. You went yeah. to where? Independence Day 2. Oh, oh, right, right. Quick and dirty because I know we're, we're starting late and I don't want to take up all the time. But, like, if you like Independence Day 1, it has a lot of the cool factor. The Alien Queen is awesome and it's actually done really well. The, mm. the CGI and, and animatronics, I presume they use in some scenes, although not enough, was a pretty good thing. But I, I, I'm going to make a video talking about the movie, but also I want to just kind of rant a little bit about this day and age of like remakes and sequels that are just complete, absolute uh, shit. Like, oh, they're shit, but they're also like rehashing everything. Like this was exactly the first one from the beginning to the end. The jokes from the same characters, the plot from the same characters, the concept, but it was just done worse. It was done less inspired. Like, the alien ship shows up and, you know, half the movie is the fucking ship crashing into Earth, which is exactly, you know, the entire first half of the Independence Day 1 as well, only it's smaller. So it's just, but Was any know. of it ironic? Like a throwback? Oh, or no. was it just straight no. rip? Straight rip. Wow. <laughs> they, they resurrect several characters who, like, at the end of the first one should be down and out, but they're just, like, back. And they're exactly Man, everything so you're saying, Jeff, is, like, the reason why <laughs> Jurassic World was so great. <laughs> <laughs> so have you have you guys seen have you seen any of the posters for independence day like around your your town because i know like jeff yeah. you, you and we are in the same place so you guys get i assume posters that are like a, a spaceship crashing into like the golden gate bridge right is that yeah yeah the, the advertising scene? okay so I'm, I'm walking around downtown vancouver and i see an ad for it and it's like you know we'll look, look out canada independence day and it's got a spaceship crashing into the cn tower and i'm like <laughs> the fuck who cares about the cn tower <laughs> what this that is do? why why does anyone care about that but then i realized that's because we have no monuments in canada there is nothing <laughs> to crash into or destroy here i, feel I believe like they having... mostly left you guys alone yeah yeah well and also we, we got that thing where advertising agencies think that canada is one city by putting that ad up in vancouver most people are going to be like yeah i don't recognize that landmark at all it's from a place that is not here we would be okay if Toronto got blown up by spaceships, I think. <laughs> it's funny you. living outside of San Francisco because almost every movie, the disaster does take place in San Francisco. Almost. <laughs> Dude, always start to San Andreas is the best. I'm sorry, like, for as fucking dumb as that movie is, the fucking massive tsunami that comes is just, like, one of my favorite San Francisco destruction scenes ever. It's so fucking great. And it has The Rock trying to outrun a fucking giant wave in a boat, which is... <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> all the movie was in the past. The second... Jesus Christ. Like, there's some roles The Rock can really pull off. I actually like The Rock, but him hopping out of that helicopter where basically it looks comical, just in, just in general, like him being like, damn, it's right behind us. They like get the <laughs> helicopter. He's like, get inside, please. I'll save you. And it's like, there's no room in that fucking helicopter, Rock. You take up the entire thing. It's I love it. I love it. I want to say, uh, Independence Day Two is the first movie in years I've talked myself out of. Like, are we were totally gonna go see it, and then we even watched Independence Day the night before. Oh wow! Sort of like, yeah. I don't. I don't think we're gonna go. <laughs> And it's and I like bad. I was like family, do you object? And they were like, um, you know. So it's not that bad. So it's, here's, here's the question: Did you did you buy tickets in advance and then decide not to go, or was this no? A, no, when we allowed. buy okay. we buy tickets. Uh, we're going. I was I'm trying to judge the seriousness of that decision. Yeah, you you buy tickets. You're sitting through the whole goddamn movie. I don't care how <laughs> bad it is. So. Well, so to that to that end, do you like? Have you ever walked out of a movie before? Have you were just like, I've never walked movie? out. I cannot understand the concept of walking out of a movie. I was like, I I um, I don't know, like the way I was raised, a Nebraska thing, but like I just can't. Even, <laughs> Where I'm from, we sit through our terrible media. I I can't. Yeah, I don't you're know. Your whole and, dinner. And you're you like, know, like I mean, dude, actually going to movies in Nebraska, like we used to, we used to like very often go to day, you know, showings, and it would be really strange when like a older couple would walk into a yeah. movie that like you totally wouldn't expect that they be at and just be like you know then they get up and they leave and i say to myself 
at least they got a senior citizens discount and they're like like i can't i I just don't understand i agree the best walk i've ever seen though i did see a movie with my friend in college i went and saw the mist or yeah it's called the mist i think yeah the mist Mm -hmm. anyone knows that movie don't have it spoiled for you no don't nobody needs to say it (laughs) end of that movie is the biggest kick in the balls of the movie's ever done my friend it was like it's a good movie by the way too it's actually a really solid movie but the end of it is just one two just just punch in the dick just one two. <laughs> my friend he, he like literally did the the seinfeld like oh all right and just, like, <laughs> out. the second it happened and it's the final moments of the movie uh again i'm gonna spoil it if you haven't seen it you should but man he just was like nope done walked out and he's in the lobby and I'm like what's wrong he's like that pisses me off he's like that's the worst fucking He's like, I don't need that in my life. I don't need to think about that. It's the worst. And I was like, all right, I can ask you if you. I feel, I feel like a bad person because I laughed really hard at the end of that movie. Not because I thought it was bad. <laughs> because yeah, I right. thought I the ending was funny because I was just like, oh yeah, they did that. That was great. And I, yeah, I was the only one in the theater just laughing my ass off. God, I he- almost helped yell at a movie once. Um, I saw that like Spring oh. Break movie with Selena Gomez and like I don't know some other girl was in it, and it's like so- it's not a good movie. Is it spring? Are you talking about spring, spring breakers? breakers? Yeah. The the one the one by the guy that did. Oh kids, right. right. The, um, it's got Selena Gomez in it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and like Vanessa Hudgens. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. And at the end, this guy was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like that's what he yelled at, <laughs> at the very end. And someone else was like, "What was that?" <laughs> and I was like, I was like riled up, you know. And I was like, "Yeah, what was that?" <laughs> That's the only time. That's the only time. <laughs> I I want to my one movie mistake that I you know I well, I can't make it a second time. But I I was dating a girl in high school and she was like I do not want to go see scary movies at all. Like she's just not <laughs> interested at all. I mean, so I'm like you know as a boyfriend I'm like well let me test the limits here a little bit right like maybe we can like find a, a thrill or whatnot. So I'm like okay, let's go see a movie okay choose and uh i thought that maybe in the mouth of madness like you know would probably be more thriller than it was totally (laughs) fucking mind fuck and uh yeah well needless to say it was like (laughs) one of the worst dating decisions i ever made in my entire life did it actually break up the relationship though it didn't, but you know, like I feel like it allowed her to establish dominance in the relationship <laughs> because, you know, like she, I can't, I'm gonna have nightmares for three. And you know what? Like in the mouth of madness is, in my opinion, one of the fucking freakiest movies. Uh, if you're just looking for like crazy psychological horror, it's fucking out of this world. Um, so yeah, it, it. I think there were emotional scars, and she used those scars against me. My Did she told- watch it all? Yeah, yeah. Because you know what, Nebraskans don't fucking get out. (laughs) Right, they pay the movie. movie. You're gonna watch it. (laughs) My dad told the story of he took a girl on a date to go see Aliens, and he actually he knew it was a scary movie. Obviously, I think it was even the second time he was seeing it. And he got he said, "Do you want popcorn?" I was like, "Sure." And she's like, "In that scene where the aliens up in the chains and the cast just kind of looking up at the chains, like back then it was one of the scariest scenes you could see." So my dad timed it where he came. Uh, behind her and like scared her on her shoulders or whatever. She actually screamed and then got up, walked out, and you never saw her again. Like, oh my god! That's how the story goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's, it's fair. Yeah. It's fair. I hope. I hope that they both went back and finished that movie at some point because it's amazing. It was in Nebraska. Yeah, my dad saw it a few times. But maybe she never did. I guess we'll never know. Sad times. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's a thing I think, and and I, I we've talked about this before on on pre Swan Song stuff. Where this is the kind of story that if people stop going to the theater to see movies, it will just go away. It'll just vanish. Yeah. So, <sighs> I yeah. love going to movies, man. It's I I, I can't see. Myself I did too. Not doing it. I can't wait till I can get that senior citizen discount, man. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking see all the movies. So we're Maybe talking. Then about, I'll start like, walking. A couple out. Of months. When's your birthday? I mean, a few months. You know. We got a while. We got a while. I already had a birthday this year, so you got to wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, when when TwitchCon 2018 rolls around, we'll uh, we'll go see a movie. You can get me on your senior citizen. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. 
We told everybody. That's the joke. I'm there we go. That's, that's case, the joke. In case you've uh, never heard that joke before. Can I, can I use that as a segue? Can I use old as a segue? Old people love segues. Um, Hit it. Yeah, uh, totally. And this one's good because I was old enough to oh, be God, able to man. talk about the experience of downloading the original Doom off of a BBS and it actually taking me two and a half hours to do, despite the fact that it was like literally 5.2 megabytes. I'm also um, old enough for that analogy to yeah, stick. Yeah, you're, you're, you're um, geeking about uh, Doom. Yeah. We, Dude, I have to say, holy fucking shit, did they make an amazing fucking game. And suddenly, I was all like negative Nancy about their Quake announcement at E3. But after playing Doom, and like, mind you, the multiplayer I haven't touched, but all I've heard is like, it's kind of shit. But who cares? The well, single player is fucking amazing. It's actually just yeah, like, hey, do you want to fucking kill crazy satanic demons and shit and they almost play into the fact of you know in the world of single player games i like fight some stuff and then i have like a cut scene where a lot of talking happens and like these big elaborate things happen the game is self-aware to the point where it's like it makes fun of other games where there is a uh, there is a uh, individual who is trying to accompany you on the mission. You know, that guy over the fucking intercom mm. and your guy is basically just like, fuck this guy. Like everything that he tells you to do, your actions do the exact opposite. And like, he'll want to give you this big long monologue and he'll just like fucking smash the monitor and shit. And I'm like, I like this. I like, I almost <laughs> wish I could play doom where it was just like, here's a fucking room and here's 10,000 demons. And now you've got a key and it opens up another room and there's 50,000 demons and you just fucking kill them all. And I, I hope this isn't reflecting on me personally or anything. It's just such a well done doom experience. It's amazing. It's incredible. Nice. So that's why long... I wasn't mad. Anytime I died, like if I had to do a room like 10 times in a row, I wasn't even mad. So I was like, right. I love this. It doesn't right. matter. I, I got to the point where I would be like, I would get hit by like a fucking zombie and be like, oh, nope, not good enough. Nope. We got it. <laughs> we can't let fucking that guy get the best of us. Like we, we control the carnage here. <laughs> not like a as that game, like that game came out, and then a couple months later, Disney or Pixar, or whoever, is coming out with a giant movie called BFG. And I was like, Big Friendly Giant. There's a bunch of people that do not think it's Big Friendly Giant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, they're making another Doom. Oh. <laughs> it's favorite, like, really, if you watch the my favorite role, doll book. Grandpa Giant, you're like, wow, we're, yeah. we're in trouble, young blood. Have you read BFG. The, the BFG? Yeah, big yeah. fucking guy. No. Dude. Honestly, you would probably laugh your ass off. I mean, yeah. let's let's talk real talk. Roll Doll is like amazing, and BFG is is in my opinion his best book ever. They're probably gonna fuck up the movie. Like even today, this two hundred page classic. It, I, it, oh, maybe I did read it back in the day. Yeah, yeah, good shit. Yeah. Well, shit. when go go see, you know, go see go see, back go see the BFG week, and you can come back and talk about it, and we'll see if we can tie Doom into that discussion in some way. Yeah. So maybe, there'll be, great. maybe there'll be an Easter egg. Yeah, you, Kaylin, you played. Did you finish Doom? Yeah, I finished. Did you ever play the the original, like the old one? No, I never did. Um, I thought about going back and playing them, but I mean, they're not. I don't. I, I'm sorry, Weep, but they don't look like real games. Like, what don't? you know how you know how you could <laughs> buy when you were young. You buy those little like twenty dollar handheld games, and it's just like pixels. I got a Lion King one. I don't know and some other ones. You say it looks like a tiger handheld. Yeah, yeah, a tiger healthy. handheld. Right. Yeah. Yeah, nice. so I was like, ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I was gonna, I was gonna think I was gonna play <laughs> Wolfenstein though, but then I didn't get I didn't get around to it. But I beat it on um Thanks, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? What scene of the game you're gonna play? Stein? <laughs> I can't so, Wolfenstein is the name of a castle. Wolfenstein is the name of a law firm. <laughs> I have look when there's when there's two vowels together. It, you probably notice this, but I, I like cannot pronounce. No, I love anything, it. <laughs> like ever. No, that's and I true. changed my pronouncing. Oh. I used to say like dragon all the time, and people were like, Neil says that too. Neil says dragon, and I was like, is that <laughs> my how friend you is say introducing it? your new board game called Monopoly. It's a uh, it's this money <laughs> game. I'm gonna check out, but it looks like it's graphics are pretty bad. Well, Jeff, the irony of that is that technically monopoly is the correct way to pronounce it because it's the word <laughs> mono and poly meaning multiple of one. Anyway, Wolfenstein. Um, the Wolfenstein remake was really good. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, I, I have Doom, but I haven't played it. I loved, I, I think I'm avoiding it for that very reason that, that we talked about is that I loved it so much as a kid. Like Doom 2 was my jam and oh. I don't want to go back and hate it, but the- You wouldn't, the are you kidding? I know, but that's the thing. Like, but you I have, wouldn't. I have read the books. I know, I, so have I. They're funny. It's, it's, you know, the comic, the books, the whole, the whole Doom universe. The, the, Adam, the first Warhammer novel is, is Doom. Just like, it's just guys running around shooting things forever. Adam, I rarely replay games anymore because there's just always so many games. Yeah, and I'm not saying I replayed Doom yet, but I was really planning on it. Like I was going to redo it in nightmare mode. So nice. I don't think you would ruin anything for you. Have you checked out Merrick Art, by the way? The what? Merrick Art. My, what is that? <laughs> Trying uh, to organize no. the vowels. Here we go. I can't oh. do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Now I get it. Now I get it. <laughs> it was one of those delayed blast humors. It took a I little. actually really like the idea of being called Wolfenstein, though. Like that sounds, that sounds like a bank simulator. But when you find out it's actually a guy shooting Nazis forever, it's like so. <laughs> Dude, you know what, Jeff? There will actually be a time where, like, in 30 years, game developers, like, old franchises will die, and someone will be like, oh, I've got this great idea, and we are going to call it Wolfenstein. <laughs> about a man who will go and fight the Nazis um, who have <laughs> experiments. It's, it's the exciting story of Hiram Wolfenstein, attorney at law. And so it would be like, yeah. around <laughs> subpoenaing people. It's great idea. Perfect. Oh boy! Yeah, that was actually a pretty decent remake, by the way. The the new Wolfenstein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. God damn it! I know now you get. Yeah, I didn't know what order to play them in. That's why I didn't start it. I think you could just play the new one. Yeah, I think it doesn't. It is mega pixel. You're not wrong about that. It's a world game. It's like ninety one or two or maybe right. Like, isn't it that old? Which one? Original Wolfenstein. Uh, it's yeah, it's old as hell. Ninety three, I think. 93 like that's fucking old yeah and i have good memories of it but i i definitely i can see what caitlin's saying about a few of these things like i've i've i did that nostalgia i did the jedi outcast or whatever jesus <laughs> some parts of these games do live up to like oh i remember this this is so great but then other parts it's just like no this is terrible yeah terrible i had that experience with brood war and i i brood war is like a religious experience for me it's like why i'm here but why am i playing zerg again well, no, I mean, like, once you go to StarCraft 2 and after, like, all the things they do for you and refined and, and just how much more seamless and modern the game experience yeah. is, like, where it's like, guys, go over here. And then you got to hide <laughs> in a wall, like, <laughs> and you're like, no, oh, no, go over here. And it's like, I, I don't understand. And you're like, wow, this is stupid. <laughs> the, mining, the mining is what triggers me in Brood War. Because you yeah. can't like stack your guys anymore. It's just like, it's just like everything. Everything goes everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Cool. You guys want to play some Swan Song stories? Yeah, you got 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. We got 10 minutes? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Good show. Uh, cool. All right. Well, I think when we last left off, there was some, there was some ninja. It was a ninja situation. Yeah. Can we, can we recap? Yeah. 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 Lots so since an explosion at bingo. Yeah. The, well, so, I mean, the, the opening, the opening scene of the episode is, uh, the tower, right? It's the, um, the telecom tower and, uh, and the rain, right? So it's like early morning, kind of steely, like grayish light. Uh, there isn't a lot of a lot of color. Everything's cast in this sort of like cement gray. And we see the the building with all these antennas up top, and uh, the camera probably follows like goes straight through the the main doors, past like the puddle of blood that's starting to like dissipate in the rain, and like a drag mark uh, of a of a body, and. And then just outside, because you had you had like pulled her to, to safety, uh, is Mr. Scarian, right? You're you're behind cover, and you have uh, the the bleeding out uh, body of um, uh, the corporal um, who defected and wanted to uh, to come to safety with you. Just because um, I keep fucking up her name, it's uh, Hope. Uh, her <laughs> first name is uh, Hanako. Yeah, Hanako is her first name. Hanako. Yeah, Hanako. Hanako. Uh, and then, yeah, Mario was her, her last name. Um, so, yeah, so she was shot uh, by, uh, by a sniper. And we passed, the camera passed over the two of you into the entrance of the, of the building where Fugazi and, 
his now impaled uh, friend El Tigre uh, are standing. So we have the sort of flickering effect of the camouflage field of this one ninja uh, turning off as he like, shoves his sword into, uh, into your friend from behind. Um, and uh, Mr. Lost, you, how are you doing on hit points? You're, you're like, <laughs> you doing okay? Are you, how's, how's that looking? Uh, let me let me let me take a check over here. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna load it up. Um, <clears throat> I have six hit points. Okay, that's not so bad. It's yeah. more than zero. You're doing okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So you're. Uh, yeah, you've been you've been shot. You're hit by a hit by a sniper on your way in. And uh, now uh, we get the uh, the group of you uh, kind of in the uh, in the room. And there's uh, there's the, the ninja. So prior to all this, if we want a quick recap, um, yeah, there was bingo. Uh, bingo day didn't go very well. Um, it, uh, yeah, it was a it was a tragedy for some. Um, but you managed to uh, escape the prison, um, and uh, so far uh, evade capture with your uh, with your your new friend. Um, I think we left the prison in a sort of state of riot, right? Like the, uh, the prisoners had taken over and were, uh, were seizing the place. And the reason you came to this building um, in the first place, this tower, was that there's some old telecoms equipment that you can use to get in touch with uh, Fotenhauer High Command with the, the ship in orbit, and they can hopefully send somebody in uh, to come and, uh, come and get you. So uh, first things first, though, these, uh, these ninja... Um, so what, uh, I guess probably we see Fugazi, like Fugazi, you'll be the first one, uh, able to act, right? Cause y'all were running inside and then dude ran into the business end of a sword. Um, what do you do? It, uh, in uh, actually inside the building? Yeah. Like just like as you're as coming the, in. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't, you know, I don't go in. What's the, like, what's the order of just me and him? Yeah, I think the last the last thing that had happened was the four of you, because um, Sakarian had stayed behind a little bit to uh, to get uh, Hanako to safety. Um, so you, uh, PK, um, that's right, PK, lost, and LT Gray all ran inside, and then LT Gray was uh, was attacked because he was a bit he was lagging a bit behind, and so as soon as you came in, he got he got ambushed. So he so the ninja was behind us is what I'm trying to. Yeah, like the ninja kind of emerged from the shadow. Uh, they're they've been difficult to pin down so far, right? You've got a general idea of where there's at least three of them. Does um, us entering this building allow me to shut the door when everyone's in except for El Tigre, who is dead on that man's sword? Um, I mean, El Tigre, we don't know if he's like dead, dead. He's just been stabbed. He's been impaled, uh, and I think that he like slides off the guy's sword onto the ground. Uh, maybe if you were to check him, you could find out if he was actually alive or dead. But uh, yeah, there's there's like blood dripping off of this guy's mono blade. I, I mean, mean, he seems don't dead. I have, don't, he seems dead. Don't we have like an immediate threat with this ninja? Obviously, like, is this a police? The no, the ninja isn't isn't doing anything else. He's just he's just like stabbed El Tigre, who's like falling on the ground. He like flicked the blood off his sword, and he's just standing there. And you can't see anything. Like the the ninja are essentially like um they're all they're wearing like uh, camo like body suits uh and so i see like a shimmer of- yeah i mean you can see them like he's he's his uh his suit is off but he's still wearing like black and okay. gray urban kind of camo painted metallic like he's definitely a cyborg like his legs bend in a funny way and he doesn't have like a normal number of human feet or is this joke. some is this something i think that the prison would have um i mean you never saw anything like this at the prison no um, well, I guess I don't make any immediate moves, but just kind of like hands up, kind of maybe trying to step back into the building. Mm-hmm. Mara okay. only told me about the ninjas. So- yeah, she told you about these like boogeymen that yeah. she was sure would get sent after you. Okay. okay. I don't clarify. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? You've, you've been shot, so you're like a little stunned. Um, but yeah, you're, you're like right in behind. Um, well, I think, yeah, PK, PK is like holding her gun and like, she, she like brings it up to point it at the, I, I, I put it down. I'm like, okay. PK down. 
She she growls. <laughs> I maybe I even say like if if this thing wanted us dead, I'm sure we would already be dead. And then uh, with you know my hands kind of back up after putting the gun down, it's like I'm just gonna attend to my friend here, like backing off into the building. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's standing. Yeah. The body is on the floor at his feet and he's looking over it at you. And you see, he's got like uh, this big lens kind of in the front of his helmet or in his head. It's hard to tell. And it like flips uh, and like changes lenses. And uh, he just watches you uh, as you approach and doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything. Uh, he still got his sword out, but you're like, you have to come towards him to get to LT Gray. Oh, I'm sorry. I met Mr. Lost. I didn't mean Okay, it. yeah. You want to back away from LT Gray? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so just... Watches you. Sorry, LT Gray. I got your secrets. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a game, you know. So uh, uh, so outside, um, Sikarian, you've uh you're you're behind cover. You're no, home. I was running towards Are you you're carrying I... you're carrying her or do you like where do you want to be? Because you, you got to her. Was the plan okay. to inside or yeah grab her okay. and run back inside with the rest okay all right um so she's like she's unconscious so you, you pick her up and uh you start heading towards the uh, towards the building and i think that you see between you and you can kind of see through this like blurry like form to where the um the building is to where fugazi and uh, and lost are I vaguely uh, think and between us yeah you can see there's something something between you and the uh, uh and the building uh, and you can see, like, on the ground, the puddle that it's kind of, like, standing in. And there's, like, water displacing around the bottom of its uh, its feet. Would I get the impression it's just standing there looking at me? Yeah, I think I think so. I think it's just standing watching you to see what you do. Uh, and also, like, getting – it's in the way, right? So it's not yeah. – um, yeah. it's, like, blocking the, blocking the door. Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, what would Sakarian – Shot me through my chest, shot Mr. Lost, shot her. I don't know what's going on inside there, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he would just, if you're going to allow it, I would I would raise up my plasma projector and just shoot a volley and then try to run, like, I, with the intention of killing or displacing, but I'm getting inside of the rest of my squad is what I'm trying to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can, take a, you can take a shot at him. So you've got... Like Mario's uh, unconscious, so if you want to carry her, it does it does take both hands. But you could like put her down, uh, or no, I'm not putting her down. I guess if if the plasma projector is something I could not shoot, then I would just use my sidearm or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you could fire at it with your your laser pistol, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that. Um. So the armor class bonus, uh, with the fact that it's still this one's still in sort of semi invisibility mode. Um, it's got an AC of two. Okay. Uh, and just again, thematically for everyone, it, it's like a, I'm not stopping and firing. I'm going to like do everything I can to just shoot at it, try to get it out of the way and run inside with the rest. Like it's a panic situation. I believe the other one's still sniping at us type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, do pistols have fully semi-automatic mode or whatever or? uh laser pistol doesn't but it does have the the innate plus one of um uh being an energy weapon okay so then i'm at a plus eight all right okay okay so you yeah you as you as you come towards it um you you get your pistol out as you're kind of like carrying uh Mario and you fire at him and it it lances towards the thing and we see the the sudden bright flash of the the laser weapon and the ninja it doesn't even it doesn't move or like dodge away it just kind of like slides we see the the spray of the water as it like slides to the side and your you know, the beam of your uh, your laser pistol hits the wall of the building um but you follow the the shot and make it to the door uh, it doesn't like run to stop you or anything but it's near me i guess it it just slides yeah, you, yeah as you as you run by like it, it slides to dodge the shot and then you run past it, but it doesn't like jump on you or attack you or anything. Interesting. I would just shoulder through the door if it's open or whatever, just barge in and then. Mm-hmm. That's where we are, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Try to slam the door shut. And then uh, I would, as I, I would back away from the door looking, I mean, when I say back away from the door, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the door, backing up, pistol out, breathing hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, like calling to the group, like, you know. Yeah, and I think we see, 
we see Stikarian's entrance from the sort of predator vision of the of the ninja. So we see it's looking at in like heat form. So we can see Lost and Fugazi and the like swiftly cooling body on the floor of uh, of El Tigre, and um, we can see uh, like a, a little uh, heartbeat meter for each of the the people that it's looking at. And we can see Mario's heartbeat is kind of like weak, um, but it just yeah it just stands there, the sword out watching. Okay, uh, and I guess just... I turn and see this one just standing there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'm a little bit intimidated by the fact that the other one just neoed my my shots. Mm-hmm. I just kind of look at it and uh, not raise my gun or anything like that, but I'm just I'm I'm with my back to the door, but not next, not up against the door. But I'm like, what what in the fuck is going on? I I maybe then at that point, like I speak up on two fronts. I say uh, that thing didn't fuck with us either. And uh, what's up with this this person? You just what do you, what do you mean didn't fuck with us? It's El Tigre is dead at its feet. Well, that's El Tigre, but I mean us as a collective. Um, he was not hostile towards us. I kind of, I'm like kind of staggering. I stand up a bit straighter while I'm just grabbing where I was shot. And I look at the, I don't remember where it was, just grab anywhere. (laughs) And I look at the one that's standing over El Tigre's body and I say, you're here for her? Um, Yeah, who has the, who has her, her, there's a katana that somebody brought with them. Is it, do you have it lost? That was Tigre. Tigre, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, I think that while you're while you're speaking, um, there's like a faint kind of me- uh, mechanical whine as the thing kneels down to pick up the the katana next to El Tigre. Like it pulls it from his, his uh. Hand. Uh, and it, it like sheaths it in a uh, like a sheath behind it. Uh, and then yeah, and then you say that lost. You're like you're here for her. Uh, and it it takes. Uh, it takes a step forward. So it sort of takes a step forward towards Sicarian and uh, and the body, or and the uh, he thinks it's a body, or it will be soon. Uh, Maru uh, in his uh, in his arms. Um, I say to it then that I want to say goodbye to her first, and then I start walking towards her. Okay. Uh, so it yeah, it just it just kind of watches. It stands, doesn't doesn't respond, but doesn't move any further forward. Okay, so um, Mara's still in Mr. Sakayan's hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's kind of like, she's alive, she's stable, but she's, um, yeah, like if you, if you jostle her too badly, she'll start to bleed out and die. Uh, okay, so I, um, I just walk over and I kind of brush the side of her face with my mm-hmm. hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm doing this motion to my ring on the other side and I kind of pop it open. Mm-hmm. And try and pop the contents of it into her mouth, and then I like touch her lips. I, like, Do I know what that is? Her hair. Um, so I think that when we see this, we get this like this this close uh, sort of close up of of Mr. Loss leaning in and like doing that, turning the ring around. Um, I think we get a we get a fade to um, like we, we we snap back to like the, the hallway of a of a ship maybe or like a, it's a Fotenhauer like facility, and um, your, uh, we see, um, this is like pre-mission, right? And we see uh, Fugazi and, uh, and Lost uh, just like standing in the hallway talking. Um, and uh, what are you, uh, uh, Mr. Lost, what are you as- asking uh, Mr. Fugazi for? What, is it, what do we cut in on that conversation? I guess I'm like, Mr. Fugazi, I, I'm new to this. I can't die just yet. I mean, I mean, maybe I could die to get out of a situation, but it's got to look like I really died, you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, like to, I like to imagine that's the exact face that Weed's character makes at you, too. That, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, uh, come again? I need, I need like, like, a get-out-of-jail card. If something bad happens to me, you know, just just like one more option because I, I oh, don't want to die yet. You need like you need you need a circuit breaker. You need something that'll just yeah, but 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 then like <laughs> like you know, it just you're done. Yeah, but then you're not done. But you you want to you want to act like you're dead. Yeah. But then not be dead. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, we could make something. Um, yeah, it's it's a possibility. I mean, you know, basically it, it heavy sedative that's time release uh, over a certain amount of time, make you appear as if you don't have a pulse and then you come back without any assistance. Of course, I can't always gauge how long one individual is out, but we could, we could, we could cook something up. That would help me out a lot. And, and it's got, it's got to fit in this ring. Oh, that's that's easy too. I mean, it's it'll powder powder. Sorry, fall. which which no which problem. ring was that again, Kaylin? Which which one? <laughs> this one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So, what is what is the what is Mr. But I don't know. I guess right. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that you were in. Uh, I think that, in this conversation. Yeah, I think I would have kept it from you because it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of like a weak thing to do. Sure. You know, that I'm like actually kind of afraid of battle. Where it's like, I think it totally makes sense. <laughs> okay. I think yeah, this just continues to be very surreal for Sakara. And then as you're like stroking your face, feeding your something from your ring, he's just like, what? I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't think, we'll find out if you notice it. We'll do a little, um, yeah, we'll do a little uh, sleight of hand. But let's let's see how effective uh, Mr. Fugazi's chemistry lessons were. Okay. Uh, do you want to make a tech medicine roll? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, here it comes. Nine. All right. I make good drugs. Okay. So let's see if it, uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see if it'll fool the, uh, the sensors of the, uh, the cyborg here. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right. And then let me get a, uh, let me get a, I need a roll from you, Mr. Lost, to like see if you can do this without anybody noticing. Um, can you make a whatever the equivalent of like sleight of hand would be? I guess just like a dexterity. I uh, make a stealth roll. It's similar protocol. Yeah, just make a stealth roll. And that's dex, right? Yeah, and you have a plus one to your stealth. Yeah. So yeah, you should be fine. How'd you do? Ooh, okay. All right. So yeah, you did it. But I think what that means is that um, neither Mr. Sakarian notices or the uh, or the ninja. So Sakarian, you just yeah, you just see Lost come over and kind of like, what's the look on your face, uh, Lost, when you do this? Are you like sad or like? Well, I'm very sad and very anxious. But a lot of it's because I mean, if this doesn't work, then she will die, and worse could happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm really trying to play off being afraid. Yeah, okay. So so Lost comes over looking like distraught. And then there's a, a tender moment of like face caressing. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, uh, Hanako, I think you you feel her. She doesn't have like a seizure or anything, but you can feel her like kind of sort of going limp. Um, like her eyes flutter a little bit. And then in in the the like the ninja vision we see uh her little like heartbeat meter start to slow and then flatline i think i'm looking past uh fugazi or not fugazi mr loss as he's doing this and then as through like my shoulder i can kind of feel maru you know slip yeah her hand like slips off of your shoulder yeah and kind of like kind of i stop looking uh i stop looking at the the ninja and i'm just like uh it's like the most unraveled you've ever seen Sakari and like he's just like uh he like sees her like he like dips her forward to check her and he's like tapping her throat and like he loses all he's just not care the ninja could come over and just cut his head off he did something fucking carries puts her down he's like he immediately starts to try to resuscitate her. Yeah okay cool yeah I think that we see uh we see you because you're you're like on your knees and she's laying on the ground and so we see the the ninja's legs walking like through the through the um, the sort of rubble towards you, and then it crouches down uh, next to you, mm. um, and reaches out and puts uh, one of its fingers like on her on her neck, and there's a pause, and then it takes its hand away and then stands up as as though it's like it's satisfied, uh, looks down at her, sheets its sword beside uh, the other one, and then takes a step backwards and starts to sort of like flicker and, uh, and disappear. Puts his sword where? Uh, back, just next to the she other one. Two swords. Yeah. 
Uh, I think it's, like it's a very weird scene because I think Sakarian completely ignores him and is just like trying to resuscitate her, and he's just like uh, mumbling, "No, no." He's like really fucking mad and upset. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's that's what we we see the door kind of like open, like swing open a little bit. There's a, a bit of wind from outside, uh, and then the uh, the door clicks shut as we see um, this scene, kind of the dust in the air, El Tigre's body on the floor in a pool of blood, and um, the uh, yes, the the image of Sicarian uh, kneeling over uh, this this dead woman. Um, and let's let's take our first break there. Dun dun dun. Cool. All right. Uh, we got more Swan Song stories after this, so stick around. <laughs> <laughs> 